Morning, all. Hi. Hey. Good to be Ab sailing. Oh, wow. I didn't realise you were coming formal today, mate. Very nice, Benny. You ready? Yes, I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, sorry, Ben. Uh, Hartley Kid's funeral. Sorry. I just... It's okay. You would have thought someone would have seen the signs. Oh, it's not always so simple. His father certainly didn't. I mean, Elliot was a bit of a goth, but seemed happy enough. Did you give any indication at all? We searched his room looking for a suicide note and there was nothing. Mind you, a CD collection is enough to depress anybody. Perhaps we should send something. How about a, a wreath from all of us? I'll put in. I'll uh, ring the funeral director to see if the family want the flowers sent to the chapel or the cemetery. I'll pass the hat around. Good one. Maybe I should come to the funeral. I just don't want to think about it, you know. I keep seeing what was left in bits and pieces. And... Look, it, it would have affected any of us in the same way. Right, Ben. I'll follow him. You know, it's um, it's not too late for us to get a counsellor for you, if you want. No, I'm right. I just need to get this funeral over and done with. Um, we're too late for flowers. Elliot Hartley was buried yesterday. I had a classmate who OD'd on tranquilizers once. We all went to the funeral, read poems, sang songs. Did make you feel any better? I just kind of felt like the right thing to do, you know? I don't know how we would have coped with that. People deal with loss differently. I mean, this boy's parents are entitled to handle it in their own way. Yeah, well, if it was both of them, I'd agree with you. But according to this funeral guy, it was all a dad's doing, known by him and the minister at the funeral. Mum didn't even turn up. No? Oh, she's the last person that Jim Hartley would want there. A messy divorce. Not to go to your own son's funeral. She lives in Melbourne. Would have been over and done with before she even knew about it. What's she supposed to do? Same as any of us, Joe. Just deal with it. That is so unfair. Uh, talking cool about ones, dealing with things, the property book could use your attention, Joe. Yeah, right. Hey, Maddie. Yeah. Oh, looks like she's won something, eh? Hey? Huh. Yes, uh, Miss Stedford. Oh, you must be really proud of Joe. her. Are you sure you're okay? I look like you haven't been sleeping about a week. Yeah, Fine. I'm sleeping like a baby. No, no, waking up every few sleep. hours and wetting the bed, mate. Fine. I always thought that was a dumb sign. Uh, that was a neighbour of Jim Hartley's. Apparently there's some kind of disturbance at the Hartley place. That's for me, that one. All right, Jack, you can go too. 20 bucks. Sure. I don't have 20 bucks. You can't do this. Look, it's my property and I can do what oh, I want. Oh, oh, I'll take that, thanks. What's, what's going on? Well, she's going a thief. Not All right, right. one at a time. Him. Thank you, that's enough. And what's your name? Tina. Tina Johnston. I was a, a friend of Elliot's. Right. So what's this all about? Well, this is a garage sale. And she thinks she can just come in here and snatch what she wants. This is Elliot's favourite coat. And that guitar, he played that at the school dance. These are your son's things. Oh, I don't have a son anymore. This is just junk. Uh, well, legally, he can do whatever he wants with uh, Elliot's things. Fine. Excuse me. Are you all right? Yeah. It's just... That stuff, it's all that's left. Yeah, I wish there was something that we could do. Listen, if ever you want to talk... Thanks. But you really don't understand. Tina, I was there uh, afterwards, after at the scene. And I helped. I helped clean up. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, come to the job. Anyway, if you do change your mind. Thanks, but I won't. You know, losing a child would be bad enough, but to have one end their own life... He's selling all his son's things and pretending that he never existed. Mm. It was Jim's idea that the boy come and live in Mount Thomas in the first place, did you know that? Yeah, Jim mentioned it when Jack and I went to give him the bad news. The kid was having a bit of trouble with his stepfather in Melbourne, but Jim Hartley thought he could sort him out here. So the poor bugger is probably blaming himself. And everybody has to suffer I in the process. Is anybody suffering more than Jim. Hey, this wasn't his fault, Ben. Elliot could have been planning this months before he even set foot in Mount Thomas. Well... Maybe his father should have read the signs, you Yeah, know? what if there aren't any signs? Usually something, though. Did the kid tell anyone anything? Did he start giving away his prized possessions or anything like that? 
I don't know. Maybe his dad didn't know either. I mean, geez, you saw the photos. This kid was a rebel. Probably didn't even give Jim the time of day. Yes, Mary. Jack. Letty. Letty. I thought you were in Queensland with the folks. I was. When did you get back? Yesterday I came back from... What's happened? They've ruined What's it. Up? Who? Ruined Matt's, what? Matt's grave is headstone. They've trashed it. What kind of mindless idiot does something like this? Give me your last here, Letty. It seems pretty recent. Yesterday. Everything was perfect. So it happened last night. What are you going to do about it, Jack? Well, we'll do everything we can. We'll ask around, see if anyone heard or saw anything. Is that all? You've got to catch them, Jack. Look what they've done. This headstone cost a fortune. We were going to have a ceremony tomorrow. We're going to do everything we you can. You don't understand, Jack. No, I do understand. Jack? This is the only other grave that's suffered any damage. Oh, yet Hartley. Well, the booze bottles were just cheap stuff. Didn't strike me. They're only adults at this shindig. Not an idiot wants to have a party in a graveyard. Didn't you ever get dead to go into a graveyard late at night? Ooh. No, I didn't. Well, even if I had, I wouldn't have been trashing heads. Thank you. Bye. Uh, PJ, Colberg, 18 William Street. All right, Jacko, you fancy a drive? Oh, I've got to get over to Mr Hartley's place. Why? Tell him about his son's grave. You You're saying Elliot Hartley's grave was vandalised as well? Well, Joe. Yeah, it's right next to Matt. Well, there's your answer. They weren't having a party. They were holding a wake. What are you doing here? Oh, I just want to ask some questions. Do you mind if we come inside? I'd rather you didn't. All right, out here then. Come on. Well? Were you anywhere near the cemetery last night? No. Can anyone confirm this, Mum or Dad? Mum was working late and Dad's interstate on business. I'll check with him later. Well, he's a traveller, hardly ever home. Uh, look, I was here by myself. So you don't know anything about the criminal damage at the cemetery? Criminal damage? That's what this is about? What did you think it was about? Nothing. I... I don't know anything about it. Why would I? Only that, uh, Elliot's was one of the graves affected and, uh, well, we're talking to some of his friends. I didn't trash his grave. Well, it wouldn't have started out like that. Well, why don't you talk to his dad? He's the one who wants to trash everything. You're saying that, uh, Mr Hartley could have done it? I had a huge fight. And did he tell you that? When was this? Not long before Elliot died. His dad wanted him to clean up his act, start working hard at school, get rid of the nose ring, that kind of thing. And what did Elliot have to say about that? I told him it was his life and he'd do what he bloody well wanted. And his dad says, toy the line or he'll be sent back to his mum. His dad didn't have anything to do with this mess. No, it's more along the lines of a party, Tina. Look, it's easy to see how it could have happened. Elliot's father cancels the funeral so none of you get a chance to say goodbye. Get a few mates together, some beers, things get out of hand. Oh, don't lock me in with that lot. What lot? What lot would that be? It had nothing to do with me, all right? But Elliot did have some widow friends. Yeah, I used to know Elliot. Just a bitch, eh? Especially when you don't even get to go to your mate's funeral. Nah, it would have been boring anyway. All those psalms. But so you prefer to say goodbye in your own way? Something like that. A few quiet beers, a bit of a laugh? Yeah, that's right. Where'd you have it? You know, I, I can't remember really. I must have had too many of those beers, eh? How old are you, David? Oh, I'm legal if that's what you're asking. And what's your name? <clears throat> Ice. The olds call me Janice. Jan Ice. Right. So, uh, is your memory any better than your boyfriend's here? Dave's not my boyfriend. Oh, that wasn't what I was asking. The question was whether your memory was any better, Ice. That's right. I forgot. I guess not. Are you aware that, uh, somebody had a party in the cemetery the other night? Hmm. Sure. sure it wasn't you? Not us, sir. Thought your memory wasn't working, mate. I remember that we weren't there. Whoever it was caused a lot of damage. They knocked over and busted up a brand new headstone. No way. You want to see the photos? Well, 
Well, it wasn't us, because Elliot doesn't even have a headstone yet. Elliot, it wasn't Elliot's grave, it was the bloke next door. Oh. Well, I'm sure whoever did it didn't mean anything by it. Try telling that to his wife. That was Carla from the commercial. She yep. remembers selling alcohol to a man matching David O'Hare's description. We've already established he's 18. It's not against the law. The same brand as we found at the cemetery, mate. No, still doesn't put him there last night. So even though we know who's responsible, we can't do anything about it. Well, maybe it's not such a bad thing. You saw his reaction. I don't think he even knew what he'd done. He's certainly not going to re-offend it. I agree Jack. with Jack. We can't leave him off scot-free. Maybe I should have a word. Well, it's kids. It's got to be. I mean, the stereo and the CDs were all they're interested Thank in. Thank you, Detective Harris. Well, I'm just helping you narrow down the field. How would you two go with the cold bag? It was a very crude one. Bricked through the window. I think they only got a portable stereo and a bunch of CDs. Well, not just any CDs. Corn CDs. Who? See, kids. You don't want to know, boss. It's like banging your head against a brick wall. Well, would they have done anything I know? Well, you wouldn't hear them on for ASD Country Hour, boss. I happen to have very Catholic tastes in music, you know. Have you heard that music? Oh, some. It's not really my cup of tea. I wanted to understand what makes those kids tick, so I've got a copy of one of the CDs. No, it's enough to make anyone want to slash their wrists. Oh, I don't know if it's quite that simple. No, but it makes you wonder which of those kids is going to be the next Elliot Hartley. Jenny Scotch broth. That'll keep you warm. Oh, there you go. Give him some of that. That's a cure for everything, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Well, what have you been doing, Jack? Sitting on your hands? No, we've been talking to people. It's hard to think. How hard can it be, Jack? How many people are out there trashing graves? It's not a matter of who or how many. It's a matter of proving Stop it. Stop looking, have No, we haven't. We've just well, hit Jack, a bit of a dead end. you can't let these people get away with what I they won't. did. I may as well have been talking to myself. Lady, you can't do anything forget without any just evidence. Just forget it, Jack, all right? I don't know why I wasted my time. Must be pretty hard for Letty. That dude and Scott doing time. Well, Scott won't be away forever. Even so, while he's in jail, if it were me, I'd be looking for someone more reliable. Letty's not looking for anyone else. She's, she's not over Matt yet. Uh, Ben's just called. He's over at the cemetery. It sounds like a bit of trouble, and I think he wants you there right away. Right, yeah. It's another time, eh? Hit ahead. She's unconscious. It's Tina Johnston. She's certainly been drinking and she's got a split lip. Whoever took a swing at her was pretty wound up. I'm sure she was hit. Looks that way. Oh, excuse me, it's Tina's mum. Irene, she's going to be all right. Early days yet. Long day. No, I'm glad you can say that again. Mm. Let's handball this one to PJ and pack it in. Yeah. In my bed calling from here. Hey, Jack, you want to come out to my place have a few beers before you bail? Oh, thanks, mate, but I'm whacked, you know. Just want a hot shower and I don't interrupt it out. Yeah, me too. Another time? Yep, sure. Do you have a note? Hey? About being late? I didn't hear the alarm. Ah, I was hoping for a much more exciting story. Oh, sorry to disappoint you. Busy night, we're here. Yeah, Jack filled us in. Oh, Jack, mate, how's, how's Tina? She still can't talk yet, but her mum's with her. Any idea who might have assaulted her? No, oh, there wasn't anyone at the cemetery by the time we got there. What about the Ambos? Who called them in? Uh, it was an anonymous call from a female, but that's, that's all they could tell us. She hit the back of her head. The Ambos find her face down. Who turned her over? Same person who called it in? Maybe there's another wake, and uh, this time Tina joined in the party. She falls down and the revellers nick off. But one of them calls the ambulance service. Except Tina wasn't at the first wake. So she says. Who knows? Oh, all right, OK. Well, she didn't like what they did to her boyfriend's grave. 
So maybe this time she went back to try and stop him from doing it again. Jack's right. We should have another talk to those kids. You're dreaming. I wasn't anywhere near the cemetery last night. David, teenage hijinks is one thing, but assault is a very serious matter. Assault? Get real. So you can't tell us how Tina Johnston ended up unconscious? Tina? Is she right? We don't know. She had a very nasty bang on her head. Look, don't try and tell us you didn't know about it. I, I didn't. I'm serious. One of your friends called it in. I wasn't even with my friends last night. They were pretty scared. Probably thought you'd killed Tina. Look, I wouldn't know. I was at home by myself. If you want to know, I, I felt like I felt pretty bad about all that damage the other night. You know, I wasn't in a party mood. So you're admitting to being at the cemetery the night before last? Look, I was off my face. I didn't even know I'd wrecked the headstone until you blokes told me. We? Who's this we? Oh, I know. It's, uh, it's your girlfriend, the one with the funny name. You've got to be kidding. I don't go around graveyards hitting people. But there was no love lost between you and Tina, was there? Don't have anything to do with her. Except she stole your boyfriend away. As if. Right, I see. Elliot dropped you for Tina. Ooh, that's got to hurt. Bitch. I hate her. Is that what you wanted to hear? Enough to punch your lights out? No, I told you. Oh, that's right, you weren't there. I wasn't. I don't like Tina. I thought she'd turn Elliot into a geek. But I don't go around hitting people. I'm not like that, and you can ask anyone. Neither of those kids is responsible for the assault on Tina Johnston. That's their story. Well, David was home by himself, and Ice was out with some friends, and they do confirm her story. If you believe it. Jack. If you get past their taste in clothing and makeup, basically they're good kids. So, what do you want to do with them? Well, they're grieving, and as you said yourself, they were just trying to say their goodbyes. By like getting drunk and knocking over headstones? No, well, they've agreed to pay restitution. I think that's the most important thing. So don't charge them, is that what you're saying? Well, they're going through a tough time. I don't want to be responsible for making it any worse. We're responsible for doing our jobs. I thought discretion was part of our job. Yeah, all right, but you're going to need to talk to Jim Hartley and Letty Wald and see what they want to do. Jack, what are you doing here? Well, it's good news, actually. We've uh, interviewed some kids about the damage to the grave. All right, I thought it may have been about the attack on that girl last night. How do you know about that? Well, Chris told me. Is she going to be all right? It's still early days. She's pretty out of it. Um, who knows? Letty! We found the kids responsible for vandalising Matt's grave. Aren't you happy? Yeah, of course I am. What's going to happen to them? Well, look, that's the thing, OK? Um, they might not get charged. Ben thinks they've learnt their lesson and uh, they've offered to pay restitution for the damage done to the grave, so... It's, it's up to you. Sorry. Do you want them charged? I, I don't know. Letty. Do you know something about what happened here last night? Jack, I miss Matt so much. I'm just all over the place. <laughs> and you're asking me if I did this... Down. You got what you wanted. Oh, I'm not sure what I wanted was being on the same side as Jim Hartley. Yeah. So really, his dad doesn't want to lay charges. He doesn't care if the vandals get away with it as long as he avoids a fuss. How'd you go with Letty? Uh, she's thinking about it. She's what? Yeah, I know. It's weird. Did she give any reason for changing her mind like that? No, not really. Don't understand. Strange. Sarge? Thanks uh, That was the hospital. Nothing. Um, Tina Johnston is now able to be interviewed. Right. I went for a walk after dinner and I just found myself at the cemetery. Was there anyone else around? No. I was alone. So who hit you? A guy. I'd never seen him before. This guy, can you describe him? Not really. It was dark. And was he tall, short? I'm sorry. I... Well, uh, how can you be sure that it was a man? 
It's just that the call to the ambos, it came from a woman. No, it was a man who hit me, I'm sure about that. Will this take much longer? You can see how tired she is. Yeah, almost done, Mrs Johnston. Now, you still had your purse with you. Did this man take anything from you before he assaulted you? Not as far as I know it. Did he say anything at all? Was there an argument? What would we argue about? I didn't know him. So there was nothing said, he just came up and hit you? That's right. You don't really buy this story about the unknown male, do you? Come on, people get attacked by strangers all the time. What if it wasn't a stranger? Do you think Tina might be looking after a friend? It's possible. Except she doesn't really have very many of those. Exactly. She's a loner. She's scared. I wonder what Jim Hartley was doing last night. Oh, come on. He's hardly the type to hang around a cemetery bashing teenage girls in the face. On the other hand, we do know that he and Tina don't get on. So why wouldn't she identify him? Well, like she said, it was dark. What the hell was she doing there in the first place? Maybe she just wanted to be with her boyfriend. Above or below ground. What you're suggesting is an invasion of privacy. I just wanted help. By searching her room. Look, you said yourself that she's become moody. She's been secretive lately. Unless you know something, it's the only way that I can think of to find out what's going on with her. It could also save her life. CD player, is that your daughter? I've never seen it before in my life. I found it with the CD player. Corn, like the ones taken in the Berg. Well, the boombox is the right make and model, too. So what makes a kid like Tina start smashing windows and breaking into houses? Yeah, it was my son, so I sold it at the garage, so... Had to come to be in your hands. Well, it was stolen property. You mean Elliot? No, not Elliot, it was... Taken from the person who you sold it to. Were you anywhere near the cemetery last night? Of course not. What would I be doing there? Do you mind telling us where you were? Yes. I had dinner at the Imperial, and then after I had a Lions Club meeting. I mean, what is this? There's nothing to worry about, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Mr Hartley, a lot of people have suffered uh, through Elliot's death, and if you deny them the chance to grieve... Look, if I need any stupid. advice... I'll buy one of those self-help books. Look, you can do what you like. But this kind of acting out is going to keep happening unless you do something to acknowledge your son's death. Would you also like me to acknowledge the way he died? Oh, please. Oh, no, no, no. Hard. Great idea. Let the whole town wallow in it. Nobody wants to wallow yeah, in it, yeah, sir. Whatever. They want to get over it. Yeah. Mate, stop wasting your time. And we've still got to interview that girl about the bird. Well, I'm a little concerned about her psychological welfare. Well, she said something? No, that's just it. She hasn't said a word. Not eating, either. Her lunch came back untouched and no jokes about the food. Yeah, well, she might have a few worries. Well, perhaps you'd better tell me what you plan to talk to her about. Uh, we think she may be involved in burglary. Tina? She doesn't seem the type. Well, maybe she's hanging around the wrong kind of friends. Except she doesn't have any friends. Her mother's the only one who's been in to visit her. Take it easy, OK, guys? Yeah, sure. Let us know if she shows up. OK, thanks, Mrs Johnston. Her mum is beside herself. She hasn't seen her. Well, if you're on the run from the coppers, you're not going to go home to mum. But you think that's why she disappeared? Well, she's a prime suspect in a bird. Yeah, maybe, but it goes far deeper than that. You think she might harm herself? Her boyfriend's just committed suicide. Her schoolwork's dropped off. She doesn't seem to have any friends. Right, where do we start looking? Well, I might have another chat with Elliot's mate. Someone must have a clue. Jack? Uh, no, uh, Jack's needed down at the Imperial. Oh, come Look, on, you I don't want to have You have done here. enough already. Do you know what I mean? ever had a quiet drink with somebody? Uh, you you wouldn't even know your work. I didn't mean anything by oh, this. She's pretty I didn't mean anything. Handle all right, so. OK, just come out from there, mate. What do you think I've been trying to do? Okay. I think you've been trying to cause more trouble. Come on, lady. I haven't. Look, I just came here to apologise, and then she starts yelling at me. All right, Letty just... You saw what he did, Jack. Let him go. Just let him go. Hey, hey. 
Lady, lady, just... What do you want to do, charge me? Chris didn't want to charge me to the kid for that. Did, did you guys get things sorted out of the park? nothing, yeah. OK, now I need you searching for that Johnston girl. Ben's talking to some kids and I need you guys to go out, cruise around anywhere you think teenagers might hang out. Oh, beautiful. Sure. We have yeah. to uh, polish up my pinball skills. This is serious. Yeah, I oh, know, I was just trying to... Hey, Ben, how'd you get on? Well, she gave away a charm bracelet. Giving away possessions. Yeah, I know. It's not good. They're a sleeping pill. Quite a common one. It's fatal if taken in large enough doses, right? You could say that about a lot of prescription medicines. Why? I found these in the cemetery, right near where Tina Johnston was knocked over. I doubt it was hers. Why? We gave her a blood test when she was brought in. No sedatives in her system. So she was assaulted before she had a chance to take them? Well, except there were none on her person, either. I was under some pressure at work and I was having trouble sleeping, so the doctor prescribed me some tablets. You keep them in here? Yes, in this cabinet. They didn't really agree with me, so I stopped taking them. I haven't had any for months. They're gone. Hey, you two came up empty-handed, I take it? Yeah, sorry. These pills weren't on the girl when she was admitted to hospital. No. So where are they now? With the person who knocked her out? That's a bit far-fetched, isn't it? Well, not if the fight was about the pills in the first place. Sorry, you've lost me. Well, the assailant comes across Tina just as she's about to take a handful of pills. Right. A fight ensues, Tina goes down, and then the offender grabs the pills and then scarpers. So this total stranger actually saved her life? Yeah, or the stranger was just an invention to get us off the scent so we wouldn't stop her from having another go. Who hit her, then? Somebody who cared enough to make sure that she was still breathing. I think I know who we should be talking to. I didn't hit anyone. Look, I know. I know you wouldn't hurt Tina deliberately. Jack, I, I wasn't even there, OK? I've told you. I know. You wouldn't do it deliberately. You were but supposed if you would... to be a mate. I am, Letty. I am a mate. Letty, Tina is out there somewhere, and we need to know whether or not she intends doing herself harm. This isn't about mateship. It's about a girl's life. What do you know? Letty, what do you know? Okay. I went there to keep an eye out for the guys who trashed Matt's grave in case they came back. And you ran into Tina? Did you think she was one of the vandals? Yeah, at first. What, so you're here? No. Look, I just wanted to have a few words with her. That and get a decent look so I could identify her to you guys. Well, so what happened? Did you do your block? <laughs> no, she just stood there taking it. And then I noticed there's pills in her hands, and I put two and two together, and I tried to take them away. What did she do? Well, she wasn't about to give them up. And then she lunged at me. But I was just defending myself, OK? But I must have pushed her or punched her or something, because the next thing I know, she's on the ground. She's hit her head on one of those graves. So you checked to see if she was OK, and then, what, you called the ambulance? So what did you do with these pills? I flushed them down the toilet. You probably saved her life, Letty. I didn't do it for her, Jack. Hey, Matt would have done anything to stay alive. I wasn't going to have her do that, not there. It would have been like desecrating his grave all over again. So, Tina Johnston was trying to take her own life. I just hope we're not already too late. I've got the word out of all the places the kids hang out. If she turns up there, they'll let us know. Let's try to put ourselves inside her head, right? You're, you're a teenage girl, OK? You're determined to end it all and someone's mm. taking your pills. Where are you going to go? She's going to be here somewhere. I know she is. Yeah, but where? Just slow down. 
Jack, just stay in the car. Cut her off if you can. Taylor! I've just spoken to the hospital and they've arranged for you to be transferred to a special unit in St David's. The loony bin, you mean? Somewhere you'll be safe. Why, Tina? Why not? I just don't understand. After what happened to Elliot. It wasn't his fault, all right? And whose fault was it? You know something about Elliot's death, Tina? Elliot had a lot of friends, a family who really want to make sense out of what happened to him. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Tina. I thought I was getting a lift to the loony bin. Tina. My God, Tina. Are you all right? What do you think, Mother? What on earth did you think you were doing? Can we go now, please? She's all yours, Jane. Uh, Why won't you talk to me? Why won't you talk to me? Why won't anyone let me die? Those were Tina's exact words. She would have been referring to the incident at the cemetery, surely. Perhaps. Or perhaps she was referring to Elliot. Pushing her out of the way of a logging truck. Hey, that is a pretty big call, Ben. And you've got no actual evidence that puts her on the track with Oh, What about the truck driver? Did he see anything? Nothing. No, it was dark. He didn't even know what he'd hit until he got out of the truck. And why is she so cagey on the subject of Elliot's death? Because the way that she clammed up, it was like she was guilty of something. A lot of people feel guilty after someone's died. It's not always rational. No, no, no. Ben's right. Didn't she say it wasn't Elliot's fault? Yeah. Th that sounds like someone who's hiding something. But we've always assumed that Tina was down in the dumps because she'd lost a boyfriend, but maybe she was the one who was depressed in the first place. You can have a hell of a time proving that. The only person she talked to about it is dead. Maybe he talked to someone. Yes, I knew Elliot was going out with the Johnston girl. What of it? Did he say anything about her state of mind? No, never. Now, do you mind? I'm busy. He didn't mention anything to indicate that she might have been having problems? That was between them. I didn't interfere. Look, why are you dragging all this up anyway? Elliot is dead. Why can't you leave well enough alone? Because maybe we don't know enough about the circumstances of his death. He took the coward's way out. That's all I need to know. Well, that's what we've always thought, but what if we've been wrong about that? What? Look, I know you had a fight with Elliot. How do you know about that? It doesn't matter. But it might have had nothing to do with what actually happened. Oh, well, then what did happen? I don't know. That's what I'm working on. But it would make a difference, wouldn't it? Would it bring him back? No, it wouldn't. Then it makes no difference at all. Mr. Hartley, I'm, I'm not interested. It's in the past and that's where it belongs. Now go away and leave me alone. Face it, Tina's a geek. We were all pretty surprised when Elliot hooked up with her. So what was the attraction, do you know? Maybe you felt sorry for her. <laughs> well, a lot of people thought it was the other way around. You're joking, aren't you? She had no friends. Mm. She spent her entire lunch times in the library. Did he ever say anything about her, like tell you how she might have been feeling? No, we, we hardly ever saw him. He'd always spend his time in some hole with her. Mm. You know, he was a really great guy until she got her claws into him. <laughs> he was always laughing and <laughs> joking around. Doesn't seem to fit the image somehow. Mm. Oh, well, Elliot loved messing with people's minds. <laughs> Not everyone could take it, though. Like his stepfather? Didn't he hate him? Now, he used to play up deliberately just so he'd get chucked out, eh? He doesn't sound like the kind of kid who'd throw himself in front of a truck. Yeah. Well, you can put that down to her. You know, 
I reckon she was jealous. What do you mean? Well, she was always, like, dragging him off, and she wouldn't leave him alone, even on the day he, he died. Was he with her that day? Yeah. When? Not long before. Anyway, we were at my house, right, and um, we were just sort of hanging out, mm -hmm. and the phone rings, and it's her. She'd been, like, trying to look for him everywhere she had. And how did he see him after he got off the phone to her? She'd spoiled his fun, hadn't she? He got really serious all of a sudden, and um, he said something like, um, I'll be right yeah. there, and just left. And that was the last time you saw him? Yeah. That was the last time we saw him. What was the call yeah, about, I wonder? Well, I assume that Tina told Elliot what she was planning. Yeah. Tina's phone call came from the general store near the plantation forest. I'd say you're right. So, what do we do? Do you talk to her again, or what? Oh, well, there's not much point, is there? She's clammed right up. Look, I hate to say this, but without her statement, there will always be doubt. Maybe there was a witness. How did that track? Uh, there was only the truck driver, and, I mean, he didn't even see Elliot until it was too late. So there's absolutely no evidence that puts her on that track at that time. I can't buy that. There's got to be something. I'm worried if I borrow Jack for a while. I hope. It'll be somewhere near where Elliot was struck. And, uh, do you mind telling me what exactly that we're looking for? Evidence, Jack. Ah, oh, OK. Yeah, thanks. That makes it all a lot clearer. I just found what I'm looking for. We found this. By the side of the road. We know that it's yours. We've already asked your mother. So what happened? We know that you rang Elliot at David O'Hare's place, where I assume you told him what you were about to do. No. I just wanted to say goodbye. That's all. I didn't want him to try and stop me. How did he know where to find you? We talked about lying in front of one of those trucks before. Well, I had. Tina, are you prepared to make a statement saying that Elliot Hartley was killed while pushing you out of the way of a logging truck? No. Have you got any idea how many people's lives have been affected by this, Tina? That's not how it happened. It was worse. It was worse. Elliot found me lying on the road. He tried to talk me out of it. But I told him no. I just wanted to die. He tried to get me off. But he couldn't. So he said... He'd lie down with me. But when I got out of the way, he would. A game of chicken. Sort of. He didn't think I could go through with it, and he was right. The truck was coming almost on us. I lost my nerve. I started getting up, and he was helping me. Did he slipped? I get to the part of the truck. So you got away in time, but he didn't. I tried to help him, but there, were, there wasn't any time. And then, it, and then the next thing I knew, the, the truck was screeching to a halt, and I was running away, knowing. Tell me how I can ever live with that. Sorry. 
hadn't been for him, she would have died. It was not too late to arrange some kind of service. And I'm sure his friends would really appreciate that. Mr. Harper, your son, he died a hero. He was my son. That's enough. Hey, I've decided you're right. I don't like charges against us kids. Good. Then I'll pass your wishes on to the senior sergeant. And um, today I've signed a lease on a new place. You're staying in Mount Thomas? Yeah. Well, it's where my friends are, so... Good. <laughs> but I may need a hand moving some of my stuff because it's all really heavy. Oh, well, I might be able to give you... Oh, I didn't know how I'd cope on my own. <laughs> Not a problem, isn't that what friends are for? How'd you go with Jim Hartley? Yeah, OK. Poor bugger. Well, he's going to be all right. I mean, he has to go through the process. Yeah, but to go through it alone... Well, maybe not alone. Uh, while I was there, he rang his ex-wife, and they're going to organise the memorial service together. Oh, well, that's something, I suppose. What about Tina Johnson? Are we going to charge her? Well, she's going to have to give evidence at a coronial inquest. I think that's enough. No, that's well, so she is going to get off, then? I wouldn't say that. Yeah, he is. Hang on a sec. Ben, it's your daughter. Oh, great. Thanks, man. Maddie. Hi, how you doing? Yeah. Yes, I have got a bit of a cold. Yeah. Oh, it's great to hear from you. Yeah? Well, that's great. We were coming formal today, mate. Very nice, Benny. You ready? Yes, I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, sorry, Ben. Uh, Hartley Kid's funeral. Sorry, I... Just... It's OK. You would have thought someone would have seen the signs. Oh, it's not always so simple. His father certainly didn't. I mean, Elliot was a bit of a goth, but he seemed happy enough. Did you get any indication at all? We searched his room looking for a suicide note. There was nothing. Mind you, a CD collection was enough to depress anybody. Perhaps we should send something. How about a, a wreath? From all of us. I'll put in. I'll uh, ring the funeral director to see if the family want the flowers sent to the chapel or the cemetery. I'll pass the hat around. Goodbye. Look, maybe I should come to the funeral. I just don't want to think about it. You know? I keep saying what was left of me, bits and pieces. And... Look, it, it would have affected any of us in the same way. All right, Ben? I'll follow him. You know, it's, um, it's not too late for us to get a counsellor for you. No, I'm right. I just need to get this funeral over and done with. Um, we're too late for flowers. Elliot Hartley was buried yesterday. I had a classmate who OD'd on tranquilizers once. We all went to the funeral, read poems, sang songs. Did it make you feel any better? I just kind of felt like the right thing to do, you know? I don't know how we would have coped with that. People deal with loss differently. I mean, this boy's parents are entitled to handle it in their own way. Yeah, well, if it was both of them, I'd agree with you. But according to this funeral guy, it was all a dad's doing, knowing by him and the minister at the funeral. Mum didn't even turn up. No? Oh, well, she's the last person that Jim Hartley would want there. A messy divorce. Not to go to your own son's funeral. She lives in Melbourne. Would have been over and done with before she even knew about it. Well, what's she supposed to do? Same as any of us, Joe. Just deal with it. That is so unfair. Uh, talking about obviously... dealing with things, the property book could use your attention, Joe. Yeah, right. Hey, Maddie. Yeah. Oh, looks like she's won something, eh? Huh. Yes, uh, Miss Stedford. Oh, you must be really proud of Joe. her. Um, I'm sure you're okay. I'm quite getting to sleep in about a week. Yeah, Fine. 
Sleeping like a baby. No, Waking up every few hours that. and wetting the bed, mate. Why? I always thought that was a dumb sign. Uh, that was a neighbour of Jim Hartley's. Apparently there's some kind of disturbance at the Hartley place. That's for me, that one. All right, Jack, you can go too. 20 bucks. Sure. I don't have 20 bucks. You can't do this. Look, it's my property and I can do what oh, I want. Oh, oh, I'll take that, thanks. What's what's going on? Well, what she's is going on? All right, right one stop at a time. Him. Thank you, that's enough. And what's your name? Tina. Tina Johnston. I was a, a friend of Elliot's. Right. So, what's this all about? Well, this is a garage sale. And she thinks she can just come in here and snatch what she wants. This is Elliot's favourite coat. And that guitar. He played that at the school dance. These are your son's things. Oh, I don't have a son anymore. This is just junk. Uh, well, legally, he can do whatever he wants with uh, Elliot's things. Fine. Excuse me. Are you all right? Yeah, it's just, that stuff, it's all that's left. 